air the air is wet. We are getting ready to go to the big O. As in, oh my god, it's two hours away. It's a humid, my screen just like fogged up. <laughs> Let's roll. Alright folks, so thank you for joining me on the second part of this adventure. This is Lake Okeechobee, um, you know, one of the best fisheries in Florida, if not the best. I'm really not sure, I didn't do my research, but it's got to be better than yesterday. We dealt with a lot of stuff with Mikey Balls. Uh, thanks again to that man for taking me out. Um, very solid guy, had a great time, and even though the fishing was tough, you know, it was a great adventure that I will never forget, and hopefully today is the same thing. Tina is inside right now using the restroom. Once she's ready to go, we're meeting Tom Mann Jr. right around the corner at the marina, and uh, we should be on the water very soon. So looking forward to it, guys. Stay tuned. That would be Mr. Mann Jr. There's the boat. Awesome. Oh, he's not in it. Look at that. Did he just open the marina store? Maybe. That's a very nice boat. So that's gonna be our ride for the day. Tina's never been on a bass boat, ever. All right, seat belt. <laughs> a little water, you know? That's awesome, this is amazing. Well, what we're gonna do, instead of, uh, it's gonna be a rough ride, so I'm gonna drive down to South Bay, it's about nine miles. Okay. And we'll eliminate that part of the ride. Yeah. And uh, when we get put in down there, five minutes for a fish. Okay. Sweet. Put in your car with you, sir. Yeah, all right. Want to get my back? Thank you. So how long have you been doing, like, tour guides and stuff? Well, Tina, you know, I've been fishing all my life, basically. <laughs> That's great. I was on tour 27 years. And wow. When I retired off tour, and August 2012, I moved here to guide full time. That's amazing, man. So, Living the life, Mr. Man. Well, some days it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Most days it's good. I put it that way. It's a pretty good office. Yeah. This place down here is pretty amazing. I hear that. Just basically driving around kind of down in this yeah. uh, southwest corner down here. We're going to watch down there. We would be running kind of parallel with this, but, uh -huh. but if the weather gets really something stupid happens and blah 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 then you gotta run all the way back my boat so yeah. it's just better to go down here and launch that way. Can you park this thing? I can. That's what you do is you go go around the top and just loop back around like okay. this came and Sounds just good. pull in wherever you want down there. Oh he's excited. <laughs> <clears throat> You're like a little kid on Christmas. I can. Well guys, we pulled up to this first spot and uh, I quickly realized that this was one of those you can't have your cake and eat it two days because although we're out there for day two fishing in Florida with the man, Tom Mann Jr. himself, we couldn't do a video with perfect audio because the remnants of Tropical Storm Alberto 
left us a bunch of wind and heavy wind throughout the whole day. So in different portions of the video, obviously I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a voiceover to give you guys a more in-depth look at what I'm thinking, how we're fishing, and just what we're doing in general. So we've pulled up to this first spot with Tom and he had Tina tied up first, straight braid on a spinning reel with a swimming worm. I'm not sure the brand or anything like that, but it was similar to a power bait power worm, uh, about seven or eight inches in length with a curly tail dark in color, it was like a, an off purple or June bug type color. And he had her working this with a steady retrieve through the various vegetation and these backwaters that we started our day in. And me, I was throwing a bait cast combo with 40 pound braid and a swim jig with a gambler swim bait trailer. Natural in color, it was like a green pumpkin mixed with an orange. So that's what we're doing to start the day off. And uh, this is the beginning of our day on the Big O. Honey, when you get a good shot, Cast up here. Cast up to these pads. So after about an hour of throwing this swim jig with the Gambler swim bait trailer, I realized that, hey, this might not be working out. So I switched up to the swimming worm that Tina was using throughout the morning and uh, decided to stick with that for a while. But one thing I really noticed was that the bite was super tough and uh, Tom was able to pick off quite a few fish. I mean, throughout the day, he probably picked off like 20 or 25 of those kind of fish that you just saw him catch. Nothing above two pounds, so nothing to write home about for Okeechobee especially, but he wasn't having any issue catching fish. And what surprised me was that we weren't getting much guidance or advice from Tom, even though he was up in the front catching fish. So I feel like I would expect, you know, if I was in his position as a guide and I was catching all these fish up front, I would probably turn around and tell my clients, you know, what I'm doing to catch these fish, where I'm throwing, and uh, why I'm probably getting hit when the clients aren't. So that was something that I found missing from the trip, and I'm not trying to bash Tom and his style of guiding. He was a nice guy altogether, but that was definitely lacking from the trip. I would have liked a little bit more insight as to the behavior of these fish on Okeechobee and what we were doing and why we were doing it. But other than that, the fishing was tough. Like I said, it was not the stuff of my fantasies, but I had to roll with the punches and deal with it and stay positive for me and Tina. And I was obviously very used to this kind of fishing coming from the mid-Atlantic. We deal with days like this all the time. So we stayed confident, stayed positive, and just kept fishing these areas with mixed vegetation. Switch it up a little bit. So although Tom wasn't giving us much verbal direction throughout the day, I was definitely paying attention to what he was doing. So I noticed that he was pitching up to these sparse areas of grass where there was little breaks in the vegetation and I followed suit. So that's what I was doing when I came across this first fish. And luckily it wasn't a dink. It wasn't big by Okeechobee standards, but it was a solid fish by any measure. So I was happy with that fish and decided to stick with this swimming worm for at least a little while longer. And uh, just when I was losing hope in this technique because we went another hour or two with no bites, all while Tom's up front picking off fish after fish, um, I was beginning to lose hope in the worm regardless. And just when I was going to put it down, this moment made everything yeah. worth our efforts. Just ease up. Just keep reeling. Don't go in the motor. Go to the back of the boat. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Please tell me this is on his. I just got that! That's so cool! <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god! That is awesome. My PP is. It is, of course. Hey, look at his tail. Oh, what happened to his tail? No tail. Oh. Holy crap, look at that. No tail. Wow. 
No tail. I've never seen that. Dude. I've <laughs> do oh not, do not lose them. Right? I will, I will. All right, guys, that's what I'm talking about when I say it was all worth it for that moment. No matter how tough the morning was, it all led up to this catch, and it was totally worth it. Tina landed her new personal best at 6.4 pounds on Lake Okeechobee, and I couldn't be more happy for her. It was an amazing sight to see. You know, when this fish came out of the water, it took us a second to realize that this fish had no tail. And obviously that's a huge disadvantage for him. And to be able to grow to the size that it did with that disadvantage is very unique and simply amazing. Tom in 250 days a year on the water on the Big O and 27 years on the Pro Tour previously, him and I had both never seen a fish quite this unique. So seeing Tina light up, her energy, her smile made everything worth it. Uh, even with the fishing as tough as it was up until this point in the day. Wow, that was awesome. I caught a six. Now, as much as I would have loved to make a longer video filled with tons of bass, it just didn't go that way, guys. We spent a lot of the day fighting the wind, uh, just trying to position the boat in key areas where we could get our casts in and not be blown away from a spot by the wind. And it just made things very navigationally challenging. That paired with how tough the bite was, it made this day an extraordinary challenge, but it was also an amazing experience to be able to come down to one of the top 10 bass fisheries in the world, I'd say and you know her catch her personal best and it being a unique fish all right water warrior gang we are about to head out back to sarasota it's like two hours west so we've got a heck of a drive ahead of us i'm tired we're gonna get some caffeine in us and then get on the road but let's talk real quick about our day. We fished the legendary Okeechobee and the fishing was not legendary to say the least. Um, but you know, if I was younger and less mature, maybe before I met Tina, I'd be bitching and moaning to you guys about today and all the things I didn't like about the day. But I'm not gonna do that. I'll do that with her off camera. <laughs> We're gonna talk about a few things real quick. First, the fishing was tough. You know, just because we're fishing Okeechobee doesn't mean that somehow it's magical and great all the time that's just not the reality of fishing so i want to take a second and just i want to reiterate that point to you guys that no matter where you fish expectations are a very important thing and if you have high expectations and you go in and and things don't go your way you're going to be disappointed so i want to encourage you all to go into your days fishing with low expectations high hopes and give it a hundred percent today the fish catching was lackluster, but that's not for a lack of trying. She was a champ. I she, caught my PB. And Tina caught a 6.4 pound largemouth bass here in Florida. So that was the saving grace of the day. I couldn't be more proud of her. I'm not too proud of myself, but you know, no excuses. That's you know? fishing. Right? The reality of this week is bad weather. That's just, that's what it is. And also the time of year. It's been quite a challenging year for the Warrior Gang, I'm not gonna lie. I've given it a lot of effort and I continue to do so and I'll never stop that. I pride myself on giving my all and persisting and I think that as I grow older as a person, I try to be more positive, you know? That's something that I try to incorporate in my personal life and fishing is just I always keep the next catch in mind and that's a big part of fishing as well but it doesn't always pan out how you like but we still had a great time we're gonna head out now it was definitely fun you kicked ass today babe you didn't give up once tom said that out of all the women he's ever taken on the boat she lasted the longest without having to pee <laughs> i was like <laughs> dehydrating myself purposely. that was incredible to say the least and then also she just didn't stop casting you know at the end of the day there was maybe an hour where she was like eh but that's to be expected with this kind of funky fishing anyway. You did great though. You kept trying and you caught a few dings, but that's okay. <laughs> You'll beat my ass next time. You'll kick my ass next time. Warrior gang, we're out. Love you guys.